Hello again, everyone. Um, today, we're going to be talking about stress management. So once again, I'm Dr. Matz. I'm the school psychologist here at Lloyd. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So similar to like you did the last time, what you're going to do is you're going to open up a browser. You're going to type in joinpd.com. And you're going to follow along with me. So you're going to enter the code. The code here it's a V P J M Y. Again, that's a V P J M Y. So go ahead and enter here V P J M Y. And it'll take you to this screen like it always does about how you're feeling. So you can go ahead and check in or you can skip it if you like. And so like I mentioned, we're gonna talk about stress management today. So what is stress? What are some ways we can cope? I'm sure we're all super stressed out lately. Yes, due to distance learning. So we're gonna start off by filling in this slide here. So. You can go ahead and uh, with the text box, write in what is something that fills your bucket today? So what's something that sort of made you happy? And what's something that you feel like is draining you or that's made you feel tired or upset? So go ahead and take some time to do a quick check in about something that's filling your bucket, something that's draining your bucket, right? So last time we met, we talked about things that are negative, turning them into a positive. So when we can remind ourselves of what's filling our bucket, um, we may feel a little bit more in a positive mindset. So let's talk about what is stress. So we learned this term last time, physiological. We also learned a biological, right? But these two things, physically, Physiological and biological stress is an organism's response to a stressor, such as an environmental condition. So we could feel stress just based on like the temperature, the weather. Um, maybe the space that we're in isn't conducive to work or to, to learning, right? That might stress us out. Maybe we don't have somewhere to sit and do our work. Um, and it's the method of reacting to a challenge. So if there's something, an assignment that we have that's difficult, maybe that's stressful to us. So the body reacts in a specific way to stress and it activates our fight or flight response. So it either makes us want to stick around and get through the situation or take off and run away. <coughs> Excuse me. So our body can't deal with stress for too long, right? It actually changes the way our brain is functioning. And so our body wants to be in this period of rest most times and to be um, sort of calm and even killed. And so when we're in a stressful situation, yes, a little bit of stress is good for us because it helps us to react to get through the situation. But prolonged stress, it's very bad for not only our body, but our mind. And so we're going to talk about the different um, ways stress can impact us. So let's take a look at this video. There's a pattern to genius. There's a method behind the magic. I always tell people my inspiration was my desperation. And I don't do this to impress you. I do this to express and let's you. And sleeping restlessly, feeling irritable or moody, forgetting little things, and feeling overwhelmed and isolated? Don't worry, we've all been there. You're probably just stressed out. Stress isn't always a bad thing. It can be handy for a burst of extra energy and focus, like when you're playing a competitive sport or have to speak in public. But when it's continuous, the kind most of us face day in and day out, it actually begins to change your brain. Chronic stress, like being overworked or having arguments at home, 
can affect brain size, its structure, and how it functions, right down to the level of your genes. Stress begins with something called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, a series of interactions between endocrine glands in the brain and on the kidney, which controls your body's reaction to stress. When your brain detects a stressful situation, your HPA axis is instantly activated and releases a hormone called cortisol, which primes your body for instant action. But high you levels of cortisol over yeah. long periods of time wreak havoc on your brain. For example, chronic stress increases the activity level and number of neural connections in the amygdala, your brain's yeah. fear center. Yeah. And as levels of cortisol rise, electric signals in your hippocampus the part of the brain associated with learning, memories, and stress control, deteriorate. The hippocampus also inhibits the activity of the HPA axis, so when it weakens, so does your ability to control your stress. That's not all though. Cortisol can literally cause your brain to shrink in size. Too much of it results in the loss of synaptic connections between neurons and the shrinking of your prefrontal cortex the part of your brain that regulates behaviors like concentration, decision-making, judgment, and social interaction. It also leads to fewer new brain cells being made in the hippocampus. This uh. means chronic stress might make it harder for you to learn and remember things, and also set the stage for more serious mental problems like depression and eventually Alzheimer's uh, disease. The effects of stress may filter right down to your brain's DNA. An experiment showed that the amount of nurturing a mother rat provides its newborn yeah, baby plays a part in determining how that baby responds to stress later in life. The pups of nurturing moms turned out less sensitive to stress because their brains developed more cortisol receptors, which stick to cortisol and dampen the stress response. The pups of negligent moms had the opposite outcome, and so they were more sensitive to stress throughout life. These are considered epigenetic changes, meaning that they affect oh, which genes are expressed without directly changing the genetic code. And these changes can be reversed if the moms are swapped. But there's a surprising result. The epigenetic changes caused by one single mother rat were passed down to many generations of rats after her. In other words, the results of these actions were inheritable. It's not all bad news though. There are many ways to reverse what cortisol does to your stressed brain. The most powerful weapons are exercise and meditation, which involves breathing deeply and being aware and focused on your surroundings. Both of these activities decrease your stress and increase the size of the hippocampus, thereby improving your memory. So don't feel defeated by the pressures of daily life get in control of your stress before it takes control of you. Okay. So that video showed us a little bit about what stress does to our brain and how it changes our body and our physical characteristics, right? And that chronic stress is not good for us that little bursts of stress kind of help us to be successful in the short term, but that we can't sustain that long term. So just being able to deal with that stress is very important for us in our daily lives. And so just being able to notice in your body when you are stressed out, um, some of these things that happen, how we behave, um, it really impacts all of our actions and our emotions right so i know when i'm stressed i'm kind of more irritable i might lash out at my fiance and yell at him for no reason right i, I get tired sometimes my eye even twitches a little bit um maybe i can't sleep because i'm worried about all the things that i have to get done um and so you can see like a lot of the things i mentioned were in each area on this diagram here. So just think about yourself in terms of if you're stressed out or, um, you know, when things are piling up on your to-do list, like how do you react? How does your mind feel? How does your body feel? 
And so go ahead and take some time to do the stress check here right now. Um, <coughs> how are you feeling currently? Right? Are you in um, a good space? You're able to focus? Um, are you a little bit bothered, but you can still focus? Are you, you know, having more of a difficult time and not able to focus, not able to get your schoolwork done? not able to sleep or concentrate. So just sort of check in about where you are on this scale. So what makes us stress? What makes you stress in particular? Is it things that are um, external to you on the outside? So is it your schoolwork? Is it your family? Is it that you're feeling ill? Do you have um, an emotional concern at are, are they internal factors? Is it, you know, how you're feeling about yourself? Are you anxious or fearful? Did you have some sort of change recently in your life? So just go ahead and take some time to just think about the things that make you stressed. And if you're not stressed currently, like what types of things stress you out? And maybe you're someone who doesn't really get stressed out. Um, I know people who are like that where things don't really bother them so much. So just go ahead and take some time to answer that question. So just in terms of stress, these are some things that impact us. Um, usually people that are more rational and think about things based on reason and logic, they don't tend to get stressed out. It's usually those of us that um, think irrationally that um, are a little bit more stressed than others. So when we look at this definition, irrational thinking is a thought process where we don't um, consider reason or logic. And so this usually will happen um, to people when they are in an emotional state. And, you know, we talked last time about our emotions. And so it's more easy to be rational in our thoughts when, when we are feeling more stable, when we are feeling more even keeled and tempered. Um, we tend to be, like I said, more irrational when we are emotional or, or stressed out. Um, so in a second, we're going to take some time to do a, an exercise through Kami um, about changing irrational beliefs. So this is the handout that you'll get and um, I'll have a link to it in a second. Um, but basically it, it is hard to stop ourselves when we are in an irrational headspace and we are feeling this way to be able to change how we're feeling. So one method is to dispute our beliefs and coming up with um, a question uh, about fact finding, right? So if we can sort of like, in a way it's like tricking your mind into believing this, right? Like give the alternative, find the alternative belief and look at the facts and then we won't be so irrational. And so just think about what is an example of an irrational belief that you may currently have. Um, you know, just thinking like, there's no way I'm going to pass this test. There's, there's no way I'm ever going to find a girlfriend. There's no way I'm going to get that job, right? So the, an irrational belief is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a negative thought. And it's not based on any fact or any um, knowledge, right? It's just completely random and out of the blue. So let's just think about an irrational belief that we have. I'll write it there. So as I mentioned, um, we're going to go through this worksheet. And so it will give you an example of um, changing an irrational belief. And so 
we were talking about the test earlier, right? So the activating event is that when you're taking the test, you feel tense. So that causes you to believe um, that you're always going to get into trouble when you're feeling this way and that you can't stop it. So the consequence of that could be an anxiety attack and then you fail the test. But if you had a classmate, maybe they may experience that same situation in a different way. Um, and so it's being able to see things from a different perspective and change this irrational thought into a rational belief. So as I mentioned, um, you're going to do this on your own. Think about if you're taking a test and your mind starts going like, what would you think or say to yourself? What would be your belief? And what would be the consequence? What would happen if you were to do that? And then to be able to change it, right? To dispute the belief. So you practice that again down here. So how could you have done it differently? What's a question that you could ask that could challenge the belief? And so you'll go ahead and do this worksheet. And take some time to, again, you can pause the screencastify while you're doing it. And then you can come back to us and join in on the Pear Deck slides. So when you're thinking about stress and you're thinking about how to manage it, and these are some coping skills, there's probably a million others, but just go ahead and on this slide, you're going to drag the icon. What are things that are good choices? Right? What are things that are not necessarily the best way to deal with it? So you're going to go ahead and answer that question. What are the thumbs up for the positive and what are the thumbs down for the negatives? in terms of managing stress. <clears throat> and so these are actually five like researched ways that um, are shown to help with reducing stress, both short-term and long-term. So just So you're going to go ahead and answer that question. What are the thumbs up for the positive and what are the thumbs down for the negatives in terms of managing stress? <clears throat> and so these are actually five like researched ways that um, are shown to help with reducing stress, both short term and long term. So just taking a break, getting up and walking away. Um, from whatever it is that's stressing you out, maybe just taking 10 to 20 minutes for some exercise um, or just, you know, moving away from the situation. Um, well, I just mentioned exercise, right? Getting up, going for a 20 minute walk, um, walking the dog, going for a run, whatever it is that you 
find helpful in terms of exercise lifting weights weights um, I personally like kickboxing um, just being able to smile and laugh so um, you know do um, watch YouTube and watch funny videos of cats and dogs and animals um, that could be helpful that's something that I like to do um, getting social support. So just being able to call, text, send an email to a friend, a family member, uh, maybe doing a FaceTime, um, anything that helps you to connect to someone else. And then meditation. So um, just being able to sit in silence. Um, some people have a hard time with meditation. There's a lot of different apps and those are on our Canvas page. Um, I can also um, share them with uh, Miss Miller if, if that's something that you would like. You can just let her know and she can email me or you can email me directly and I can share that with you. Um, so those are also on our Lloyd website um, and the, the school, um, like I said, our Wellness Center Canvas page. So there's a few ideas. You may have others that you use to deal with stress. Um, and I think some of these are things we've talked about in the past, um, but they are tried and true ways to help us deal with stressful situations. Um, see. So in terms of this slide, right? So just, we, we talked about being reactive when we talked about our emotions. So are we, um, being that soda can again? Or are we not thinking about things ahead of time or anticipating a problem? So when we're able to do that, we can kind of minimize the stress and we sort of prevent things from happening, right? So being um, someone who makes a plan, who sets goals, that's actually um, proven to help you to not stress out so much. So just think about that and like maybe some changes that you could make in how you go through the day. Are you a person who just sort of is like go with the flow? Um, or are you someone who, who creates a plan and who is always thinking ahead and being preventative? Um, so these are just some things too about dealing with stress, right? So making sure you're drinking water, um, listening to music, reading a book, writing a letter, right? We did that writing activity last time, um, giving yourself a manicure, spa day, right? You know, we can't go and do these things in person right now, or, you know, if we do, they have to be outside. So maybe doing it at your house on your own. Um, yeah, I think we talked a lot about some, a lot about these. Um, but I'll go over some of the others, a journal, lending a hand, helping someone else, um, just maybe taking a nap, um, eating good food, having fun with your friends. All these things are good to relieve stress. Um, and so just um, take some time to answer this question. So now that you learned a few tips, um, what is it that you will do to deal with stress in the future? Will you use one of these coping skills? Will you try to change your irrational thoughts? Will you create a plan? Be more organized? And then just final question. Um, how did you feel about the lesson? Was it too hard? Was it too easy? Was it just right? So this will help in future lessons for us to know kind of like what it is that you want and need um, in terms of social emotional supports. And so thanks again for your time today. I hope you learned something new and valuable. Um, if you need anything, feel free to reach out to me via email or the methods that um, you been informed of and or you know anyone else in the wellness center can help as well um, and i hope to see you all again soon